Hey Fearless Mods fans, what is up? It's Biff and this episode we are back to work on the 2005 Nissan Titan. Last video we flushed out all the brake lines to go ahead and give it a nice fresh bit of new fluid in there to get rid of all the contaminants and any uh, water absorption and, and lack of uh, higher temperature properties that that fluid has probably um, lost over the period of all these years. And when we did that we discovered these brakes are woefully overdue for replacement. So we've got a set for all the way around, rotors, pads, and that's what we're getting to in this episode. Stay tuned. Okay, so jockeying some cars around out here. We got the Subaru, got the Trans Am, the motorcycle need to move some stuff around. Uh, believe it or not, even though we replaced the Trans Am battery with a nice lead acid one, it's dead as can be. So probably part of the other issue that's going on with that. Um, but uh, all this has to come out when we're done here to make room for another project. So if you're interested, stay tuned because uh, it's arriving tomorrow if all goes well. Okay, I'm gonna take you in here and, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and get these front brakes changed. So the first thing I wanna do before we start getting too far into this is uh, see exactly what we got. It's been a couple of months at least since I ordered all of this from Rock Auto. So uh, should be the full kit with the upgraded um, materials for the rotors, for long life and low dust, as well as the brake pad. So let's see what we got here. So again, power stop brakes, but they are evolution coated. So they have a uh, Geomet coated rotor. So let's see what we got here. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. This will be a rear because it has the a nice new rotor, but also the drum side of it for the emergency brake. Let's get into the fronts and see what we got on these. Evolution uh, ceramic brake disc pads. Comes with all the clips that we need. Um, and the front pads. Got the uh, the clips. We got some some uh, materials to put on the back of the pads, and we've got the little tiny shoes for the rear brakes. So these probably go with that. These probably go with this. And let's see these front rotors. Vented, though not slotted or cross drilled or anything. But boy, these look fresh. So anyway. Good beefy front rotors, ready to go. Front pads right here. So we got everything we need to go tackle the fronts. So let's get on it. Okay, so like we talked about uh, last time, part of the reason for me to do this is just how freaking ancient all this stuff is. And you can see it's got quite a bit of rust on here. Um, 16 years old with 170,000 miles or whatever it is. Um, and so I got a 14 millimeter here to go ahead and allow me to pull the actual uh, caliper off, but I've also got a 21 millimeter here so I can take out the larger bolts back here that hold the frame for the, uh, for the caliper. That way um, we can go ahead and then pull the rotor off. So once we remove these two uh, items, um, we would be able to get to this no problem. In fact, we could probably just pull the larger bolts and slide the whole thing off, but we'll see how cooperative this, this uh, caliper is because again there's some pretty good grooves and lips on the edge of this and sometimes they can be a little tricky trying to to get that to uh to get off so i'll probably need a pry bar that'll be the next thing i grab all right so lucky for us those broke loose pretty easy um yeah that's already down to finger tight so i'll just zip them off real quick with the impact and we'll be on our way before I take it off, I am going to go ahead and do two things. Uh, number one, I'm going to get something that I can use, probably a bungee or something that I can use to uh, tie this big weighty contraption up so it's not hanging on these um, brake lines. And then, like I said, the pry bar so I can actually get this off the rotor. One each, pry bar, bungee cord. Before I let this set down on anything, I'll see if I can knock one of these shoes out so I can get a bungee cord through here a little easier. So there's one of our pads. We'll have to push these cups back in. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute. But first, right now, I just want to get this 
suspended so that we can take the rotor off. All right, so that's suspended, and then it's as easy as just pulling this off. Let's look at the difference between these here. Old versus new. Obviously a lot of rust. As we talked about before, you can see on here where we had uneven wear and contact across the entire surface. Some points out here are barely making contact. Some are getting in there pretty good and making grooves. Um, so this rotor, back in the day, I would have put it on a lathe and tried to give it a turn, but, uh, but it's just too far gone uh, with the prices that are available nowadays and me not having a lathe. Nice new hardware that has new technology, coatings that will allow it to uh, last and not squeak and not get as rusty as that one in the first place. As easy as that, we've actually replaced the rotor. I need a muffler. I need a muffler. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and because these shoes, pads, because these pads, uh, even though they're not extremely worn, they have worn down some, and it doesn't matter how much they may have worn down. Um, if they've had any wear at all, then the cups that push them into the, uh, to give it the squeezing action, are actually pushed out a little too far. If I put a new pad in there, especially with the thicker rotor now that it's not all grooved up, uh, it's not gonna allow me to fit this back over it. So next thing we gotta do is push these pucks back in. I'll get you in for a closer view, but the first step on that is to loosen the cap on the brake fluid reservoir. That way as we push that back in, it's not going to, um, it gives that fluid somewhere to go. And my bad shocks. Half of my jack handle works like a charm. And so again, all we wanna do is just remove this cap. We don't have to take it all the way off, but um, just loosen it like this. Uh, it's still got fluid where we put it last time. This hasn't been driven really since then. So I'm just gonna keep it loose so it can vent out easier. You need to get a uh, big set of channel locks, pliers, or a uh, C-clamp. This works pretty good. These are the cups I was talking about that we gotta push back in. So you can see here, the cups are protruding out a little ways and we need to push those back in. The easiest way when you got a double cup like this is to take your pad that you removed, um, put it in there the way that it goes, make sure it's in the channels so it'll slide through. I'm gonna go ahead and take this frame off. Just put the pad up against here and we'll put the, ideally we would have the clamp right in the middle of that and the only way we can do that is to come in from this side because we want to compress them evenly. And there we go, we're bottomed out. You can see how cups are both completely in and even. So now we just take the clamp off. And we are ready to go back together. Remember the kit came with new clamps here, so I'm just gonna pop these off. Like that. All right, so that's all seated. Of course, we put the shoe in there, it'll seat it down even more if it's not quite in there. So, that's good to go. And now we can put that back on the on the truck with our 21 millimeter bolts. And because I don't trust that electric impact, I'm gonna go ahead and just check them with the breakover bar. So it comes in two pairs. Uh, what you'll notice the difference between them is one of them has the squeaker, so that when it wears down to the point that this is touching the rotor, you'll start to get some squeaky noise just from this before you're actually down here to the solid metal. Uh, they do have a silencer plate on the back, but yeah, we're gonna put a little more uh, of the stuff that they provide to help prevent even more squeaking there. Um, this pad is the one that goes on the inside, on this side over here. And the one without the squeaker goes out here, though it really doesn't matter because they are identical. Even though these pads look pretty good, look at the difference in 
and amount of shoe remaining. There's a there's a good little bit of wear on these. This is interesting. Our squeaker is hitting on the little guide here. So you can see how it's got a pivot point. All right, I just used some pliers and I just rotated it around a little bit there to bring it over to this shoulder as opposed to being right up here where we need the connector points to be. So let's see if it'll work better now. And there we go. So now it's in there. That's seated flush. This is in. Let's go ahead and put the outer one on. Just got to kind of try to get them started evenly. Everything's seated flush. That's all in there. Now what we got to do is put our silencer goo on there. The lubricant, this is for power stop. Not only applying it to the backs of the pads, but also to those slide guides. probably pull those out and lubricate them as well. These seem to be moving fine, so I'm going to leave them. And I'm going to try to get over the tops of these like so. And put our screws back in, our bolts. So these things do have a flat side, so just make sure it's rotated around so the flat side is uh, up against the, the housing here. I don't want to twist them off or over over tighten them just snug them up and that is all four bolts in the two 21 millimeters here and here and the two 14s the brake shoes are all in and lubricated you can see we got a little bit of play here but that's because we have the cups pushed back the last thing we'll do before we put it uh, back together is give it a wipe down with some brake cleaner to get rid of any uh, residual grease or from handling or that may have been on it just to preserve it. And we'll make sure we get both sides. If you do all four, you just run the risk of uh, continuing to push more and more fluid out. So before I do the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and pump the brakes. And, and get these cups to come back out so that I can push that fluid level back down before I go to the next one and push it back up again. I'm gonna move on to the left side on the front, which you've already seen, so I'll catch back up with you when we get to the rear. Too much mowing going on outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this one in time lapse, so enjoy it, and I'll catch you up on the other one whenever it quiets down a little bit. As we continue to uh, replace the brakes and and um, squeeze those calipers in, it doesn't matter that I'm reseating them in between each one, at least not greatly, because overall, with all the brake pads being thicker than they were to start, we are essentially gonna end up with less fluid in the reservoir than we started with, so it keeps getting pushed out, as I would expect. And so I just keep putting napkins in here, or paper towels in here to catch the fluid that is getting pushed out and, and making a little bit of a mess. Okay, so here we go with the back ones. A uh, little difference here, we got some 10 millimeter bolts here holding this on and we don't remove the entire bracket. We just remove the, the small caliper that's on it and then this rotor will come, come off. Now to pull off this caliper, I'm going to depress this piece here to get it underneath there and I'm just gonna pry this in this direction. Part of why that's so hard to come off is because of the emergency brake shoes that are inside there. Let me take a second here to show you these, these things, how bad they are. Way worse than the fronts. They've never had much maintenance done on them. You can see how the contact point is just a skinny little piece there in the middle. This side even worse with, we got rusting and flaking of the 
of the surface. These things are old and ready to be replaced with some new meat. These are dry. My other side was a little wet, so I probably have a little bit of a axle leakage over there. Um, not terribly concerned with it. It wasn't a lot of leakage. It was only affecting a little bit inside the uh, emergency brake portion. The emergency brake is still working fine, so I went ahead and just cleaned it all up and put it back together. This side's dry, just has rustiness and, and dust in there, but we will do the same thing I did over there and give it a rinse down with some brake cleaner. So the kit comes with new clips right here, so I'm going to go ahead and just pop those off. And then the new ones are a ton of fun to put on, uh, and they got little nubs in here so that they, because they overhang by about, well, that much. So I'm going to go ahead and place them on there and then tap them in place with the hammer, trying not to bend them. One way to know if it's good is to see whether or not we can slide our brake shoe across there. Now we'll go ahead and apply our uh, lubricant on there. Let's get this taken back apart. So you can see it's interesting here how uh, you got these little tabs and you got a couple little nubs that are in these holes. So. Essentially, you just gotta push these forward a little bit so the nub clears the hole and then pry it upward to get it coming out like that. So in and up, and I can just do it by hand. This one I'm gonna leave on here for a second so I can compress it. And there we go. All right, so it's compressed, now we can just Plop this one out, it just pops straight out, it has some clips on there like that. Again, making sure these are free to move. Move these out of the way of the bracket a little bit as you put it back on here. Take our new pad, and some more of our lubricant here. Just put a little bit of that on here and get it around where that circular, that's the only contact point it's gonna have is where the, the piston is hitting it. So we're just gonna come around this a little bit here like this. And then this one is ready to go in. A little hard to get those in, make sure all the tabs are started, and then just wiggle it back and forth with some even pressure until you can get it to seat. And now we are ready for the rotor. One thing I will tell you is we need to go ahead and wash the, uh, clean the inside of this one before we put it on because you won't be able to access it once you get the brake all put on. And on it goes. We take our last brake pad and the remaining lube and get all these areas here where these little nubs are. These are the nubs I was telling you about, so you can see how once you get it started, those go in and pop into those little round holes, and that's why you gotta push it away before you slide it out, so you clear those nubs, but they kinda hold it into place, and these are the, this is the tension spring that kinda holds it there once, it's, once these nubs are in the holes. Notice this one's got the notch on it, and none of the other three ends have a notch. So you've got a notch on that end, but just a slide on this end, same thing on these two. So we will first go ahead and put this one in by sliding it across and pushing it in to, up against the rotor. And then we'll take this one and you'll see there's, there's a couple little slots right here that those nubs will slide up into before they then pop into place in these holes. So we'll line that up. Make sure this bottom one's lined up to go up against these, these rails. Start getting it like this. You've got to pull back on these to get them to clear while you're trying to get it to go up in there. And now's when we'll take our mallet and just kind of, there we go. And there you go. Nubs are all in place. These are all seated up against our rails. And everything's, uh, and the pucks are clear back here. So now we just gotta line up the holes and put the bolts back in. Again, you don't wanna over tighten these because they are small, just snug them up. And there we go. 
Well, that's what that one looks like. So we'll give it one last clean on this side of the rotor. And there we are. One thing I want to point out is uh, my son Chandler has been working at AutoZone for a while now and I guess I've never really paid attention to this, but when you do a brake job, it talks about the importance of bedding in the new, uh, the new brake pads and rotors. Um, and so there's a bed in procedure here that I thought is pretty ridiculous and I've never really done it, but what the heck, I guess we can try it. A little time consuming, but hey, whatever. It says, perform 30 decelerations from 30 miles per hour to five miles per hour, leaving 30 seconds in between brake applications for cooling. So about a 15 minute procedure or so, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops to do this. But it, it says on the diagram, 30 aggressive decelerations. Uh, probably a deserted parking lot would be best because 30 miles an hour isn't much and if you're doing that anywhere else uh, other than maybe in a secluded neighborhood, um, you're gonna piss everybody around you off. All right guys, so that's pretty much how you do the brakes on your Nissan Titan. Four rotors all the way around, new pads all the way around and uh, made sure that the brake fluid was topped off at the end there at the right level. Closed it up. Now all I gotta do is go do 30 aggressive stops from 30 miles an hour down to five to make sure that the pads are properly bedded and we get an even coating all around on those beautiful new rotors. But uh, gotta say what a great look that is for those power stop brakes with the Geomet coating. I'm hoping that uh, at least for the life of the truck that I still have left in it, that they will never look as bad as those OEM ones were looking. So we're gonna call that a wrap. Thanks for watching Fearless Mods. Do it yourself and like and subscribe. See you again real soon. Take care.